I hope you are having a very great weekend and I'm so glad that I found a way to be able to record a video that will be greater than 15 minutes. So hopefully from question 57 we will we'll finish this particular session, meaning we would have covered a hundred questions by the end of this video. So I'll be as brief as possible. Here we have a 35 year old patient and you will see these are like um, borders of the heart as a result of uh, percussion that is being stated in this question but you notice something here auscultation revealed atrial fibrillation loud apical first sound if you are hearing a loud apical first sound definitely you think of mitral valve or any of the atrioventricular valves and then we have um, the upper border is at the inferior margin of the first strip. This symbolizes uh, atria enlargements or hypertrophy of the atrium. Atria enlargements normally supposed to be around the third rib. So, what disease of the heart are we supposed to think of after echocardioscopy has revealed abnormal pattern of mutual valve motion? So this. It's already a very simple question by the endoscopy result. So we are thinking of either mitral valve prolapse or mitral stenosis. But it is mitral stenosis that will produce loud apical first sound together with such hypertrophy. Secondly, we have a, if you read through this question, you will just come to one conclusion. This is a patient that has been suffering from syphilis and now we have a neurological deficit. So this is neurosyphilis and neurosyphilis can cause total dementia total dementia Kosakoff's or amnestic syndrome here is usually associated with alcohol or, or tamine deficiency in the so-called Wernicke Kosakoff syndrome then we have lacuna or dysnestic dementia this is usually a result of stroke but in neurosyphilis it is a total dementia Okay, we have a 47 year old patient who is feeling heaviness over his entire body, consider himself good for nothing, is depressed. The only thing I can just think of is that somebody is really depressed. So it's a major depressive disorder. Uh, when we get to the pediatric section, hopefully we will be able to discuss about this uh, infectious disease uh, properly but you will want to, want to point your attention to something here. this is looking like uh, influenza like adenovirus infection and so on but this particular patient is having vomiting at the peak of headache this is usually characteristic of an increase in intracranial pressure and which could be as that of cerebral edema so the just based on this the best possible thing to think of here is this answer with cerebral edema manifestation so please i want you to pay very close attention to this particular question because we can have about three different correct answers depending on the state of the patient given the history of substantial pain is squaring substantial pain two hours ago irradiating to the left shoulder don't forget definitely the heart is being affected in this condition and varicose vein of the left chain the first thing you want to talk about is this is an emboli i are thinking of pulmonary embolism but you cannot choose pulmonary arterial embolism because the uh, patient is first in shock and there's already a cardiac disorder so we can have deep vein thrombosis progressing to pulmonary arterial thromboembolism and thereafter causing the so-called uh, core pulmonale that is the failure of the right ventricle as is as a result of increase in pulmonary uh, pressure that is pulmonary hypertension so in this particular patient there is shock here and the cause of this shock is heart failure which is which we can invariably call the cardiogenic shock. So when you see varicose vein, think of the vein thrombosis, but read further in this patient's code that the heart is directly affected. Okay, we have a 64-year-old 
patients, severe pain in the right side of chest, uh, lags behind during breathing, percussion reveals tympanic sound. So like I said earlier, dullness will point your attention to things that have to do with uh, consolidation in the lungs or thickening of the lungs. Also when you have fluid like maybe blood or pulse or whatever, it will cause dullness in the lungs. But when you have tympanic sound, tympanic sound means hyperresonance. That is, you can hear like sound of more air. So you think of something like air in the lungs. So percussion reveals tympanic sound. So what can we actually suspect in this particular patient? Uh, Right-sided pneumothorax is best. This hydrothorax is going to cause dullness. This pneumonia is going to cause dullness. Plus it dullness. P-A-T-E, uh, I think here yeah, should mean uh, pulmonary atrial embolism, but it's not in this case. So we have right-sided pneumothorax. That is air in the thorax. Okay. This substantiates just the previous question I was trying to explain to us. And we have the same complaint of heaviness and chest pain. Uh, patient had chest trauma like four days ago. And there's something actually with this trauma. The red blood cell of the patient is low. So you are seeing anemia. So what could cause uh, anemia in, in a patient that is having like a pulmonary disorder and palpation reveals dull sound on the right so i thought the dull sound could be fluid or whatever but since we are having anemia as a result of this you are thinking of the blood is definitely leaking somewhere inside the patient so that is an hemorrhagic punctate caused by the trauma okay a 55 year old man actually drowned that's the basic thing he drowned in a water body resuscitation measures allowed to save the patient what complications may develop in the near future a patient that uh, are drowned will definitely have water in his system and they want to hide somewhere probably in the lungs so pulmonary edema so 18 year old patient suffers from bleeding disorder after minor injuries and this is occasional in arthrosis bleeding into the joints so you are thinking of hemophilia like uh, our first video what laboratory test would confirm hemophilia or hemophilia a and hemophilic factor a is a clotting factor so what do you want to check for you want to check for clotting time straightforward okay this is a patient with periodic compressing heart pain echo reveal thickening of the intraventricular septum in the basal part now when you read the history of the patient together with this uh, echocardioscopy uh, result you discover that the patient is suffering from hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and it is genetic hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and in this condition since there is reduction in the left ventricular cavity it is a concentric type of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy what you want to do there is to reduce the uh, the contraction of the heart without invariably causing a reduction in, in blood pressure so much and so on so the 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 best possible thing to do here is to give a selective beta blocker to reduce this heart activity which should be metoprolol metoprolol all beta blockers that begins with letter A to M in most conditions they are selective beta blockers. So we have history of a 40 year old patient, lumbar part of spine on physical examination is painful, on physical exertion rather is painful. So when you are thinking of lumbar part, this is looking like rheumatology. Pain in hip, joints, gluteal muscle hypertrophy, and then we have on the spine uh, regenography, we have rib osteoporosis together with longitudinal ligament, longitudinal ligament ossification. This is the bamboo spine, bamboo spine, which is an extra fissure of 
ankylosing spondyloarthritis ankylosing spondylitis so that's the correct answer you can see also spondylarthropathy with retal disease there's an infectious complication a patient also is going to have uh, conjunctivitis or uveitis so the best answer is ankylosing spondylitis so we have a 38 year old patient uh, slate production done in 15 years respiratory distant tricorf uh, the major thing is uh, patient is suffering from asbestosis this is pneumoconiosis pneumoconiosis like occupational limited form of uh, respiratory disorder and the best thing to do to sus in suspicion of all these kind of cases is a shex x-ray so thorax regenography shex x-ray a 37 year old woman is having squeezing substantial pain on physical exertion Blood pressure is relatively normal. This is normal. Heart borders are dilated to the left. Aortic systolic murmur. ECG signs of left ventricular hypertrophy. What method of examination is the most informative? Please take notes of this and you see it in many questions. Most likely you have something like this in the exam. After ECG results in cardiac pathologies, the next thing is echo, echocardiography. 99.9% .9 of the times you will not be wrong because you want to check the valves and other functions or anatomical defects of the heart. So we have 58 year old patient. I've been in the hospital for two weeks based on treatment of osteoarthritis. Now you could see from all the other uh, each year that patient is actually recovering well. So what do you do? Why should I keep the patients in the hospital? So we administer outpatient treatment. Okay, we have a uh, history of a patient with bronchial asthma, not very severe, and we just want to know how to go about giving some prophylaxis for this patient. So this sounds so much like Ukrainian drugs, but the correct answer in this case is Interloom. Interloom and Barotec, however, they cause relaxation of the smooth muscle of the bronchus. But the correct answer is Interloom. Please, just keep it at the back of your mind. Okay. 42-year-old patient applied to the hospital with complaint of pain behind the sternum. Now you will notice something that the Pain appears during significant physical work and lasts for 5 to 10 minutes, which is relieved by rest. So, IHD in all these options is ischemic heart disease, and in this patient, it's just over three weeks. This is the first time in which the patient is going to be diagnosed of it. So, and it is an unstable, unstable, it is stable rather, I'm sorry, it is a stable form of angina pectoris because it is relieved. Um, by rest or they didn't give us history of nitroglycerin anyway. So the correct answer here is ischemic heart disease first established and China pectoris relieved by rest. So we have a 19 year old patient and just like we discussed earlier there are multiple injection marks on the elbow bent skin one thing you want to think of is that this patient is an iv drug user an iv drug user so whether the patient is swearing to an old or whatever as a doctor you need to exclude hiv you need to exclude syphilis you need to exclude hepatitis so eliza for hiv we have a 25 year old female patient. Um, I'm sure many of us are familiar right now with taste disorder. When you see taste disorder together with signs of anemia like weakness, stiffness, blackout, dizziness, you are thinking of something that has to do with iron. And the patient is having menorrhagia. There's excessive bleeding during menstruation. And when there's excessive bleeding, I want it, the anemia is not going to occur just at once. Just because a lady is bleeding too much on her menstruation or during the menstrual period does not mean she's going to develop anemia instantaneously. 
color index of 0 0.75 normal is 0 0.9 to 1 or 1.1 some text will tell you 0 0.85 however whenever the color index is low please think of ion deficiency hemoglobin also is 70 very low so this patient is uh, having anemia as sort of menorrhagia so it is either acute post hemorrhagic anemia or chronic so how do we know it's chronic from the history? This will not cause an acute anemia. It's definitely chronic. We have a patient here from, if you read the question, I want to encourage us to always pause the video to read the questions. So please take note of these particular symptoms. In this particular condition, the answer is botulism. However, they are not telling us that the food is uh, canned or thin kind of food but we have double vision double vision and isochoria flaccid swallowing and all these things that can receive that can cause muscular relaxation is typical for botulism you can ask the ladies for those that use botox <laughs> to look more beautiful so we have a 72 year old patient and I want to say something very important here always ask yourself that why are they giving me this particular information secondly the simple answers are usually more correct so don't think too far so we have a patient that is uh, at undergone a surgical operation cholecystectomy and the patient was prescribed gentamicin and cephalothane first generation cephalosporin so urine tests are without pathology and uh, so on but you can see that the creatinine here is elevated definitely the renal function uh, is being uh, impaired normal creatinine is supposed to be up to 106 micromole so there is something causing this toxicity to the kidneys here and that is gentamicin gentamicin is an aminoglycoside it is autotoxic that is to the air it is nephrotoxic and it is cardiotoxic so it's nephrotoxicity of gentamicin it is not glomerulonephritis because the accumulated is drug this drug okay we have uh, a gi pathology here patient is having jaundice right subcostal area so you are thinking of something that has to do with gallbladder liver and alkaline phosphatase 2.0 alpha liter now in this particular unit the norm of alkaline phosphatase is 0 0.5 to 1.3 uh, millimole hour liter so it is elevated and alkaline phosphatase is secreted by the epithelium of the biliary ducts so you are thinking in this particular condition that the uh, the leading syndrome is not cytolytic <laughs> if it is cytolytic they will tell us about asset and alert but here it is a cholestatic syndrome cholestasis that is is a mechanical uh, it could be a mechanical disorder so we have accumulation of the byproducts so we have 55 year old patient treated as surgical impairment for thrombophlebitis on the seventh day patient is having pain in the left part of chest dyspnea and cough again thrombophlebitis the vein thrombosis and so on you are thinking of an emboli thromboembolism now i whenever you see ecg phenomenon of s1q3 here they are putting it Q3 S1, but S1 Q3 is very typical for pulmonary embolism together with other things that you have a shock and so on. So this pulmonary embolism. Um, I will take this question to just be an English exam. 51 year old patient, fatty worker, uh, she complained of frequent headaches and so on. But why are they telling us about the noise level? The next level has exceeded the maximum allowable concentration. Even though she's hypertensive, but that is not what we are talking about here. This is a noise disease. Okay, I hope 
I have somebody studying a Crimea or who transferred from Crimea seeing this particular video. Patient uh, undergoes a course of treatment due to chronic glomerulonephritis. The treatment was successful, normalization of all characteristics was recorded, sanitary could be where could be recommended like where. So Crimea is a beautiful place to be. Okay, I want to say something here. Wabs bites. See when you see uh, manifestation as a of bites, yeah, but in this particular case there is no sign of shock. If it is anaphylactic shock, you might want to give adrenaline. But these are not signs of shock anyway. These are signs of though we have like immune reaction. But the best thing to give in such condition is prednisolone. You will see this kind of questions over and over again. But in my mind, if it is not anaphylactic shock, I will not go for adrenaline. I would rather choose prednisolone. So we have vaccination by DTP, diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, and as a result of the vaccination, there are immune reactions. So what is the purpose of this vaccination is to create antibodies. So the antibodies definitely will bind with uh, antigens. And when we have formation of immune complexes, we can have like uh, some things called serum sicknesses. So these are things like serum sicknesses. If I remember, I think it's type three reaction. So the major cause here as a result of this vaccination is an immune uh, complex, immune complex. That's what is affecting the chance. We have a 29 year old patient, Dima, two weeks after recovering from angina, and you would notice blood pressure is elevated. But since the kidney is affected, you are, you are not thinking of choosing essential hypertension as your answer here. So, hypertension here might be secondary, secondary hypertension. Uh, we have erythrocytes, we have uh, protein more than 3.0, so you are thinking of nephritic syndrome because there's immaturia. That is acute glomerulonephritis. See, two weeks ago, two weeks ago, post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Now, you can probably revise the New York functional classification of uh, heart diseases uh, in angina pectoris specifically and you will discover that if they are giving the history of uh, a patient irrespective of all these other data written here that they said a day while walking for 10 to for 100 to 150 meters so if a patient is having difficulty walking 100 to 150 meters then you are thinking of class 3 of the functional classification but it is stable because it will be reversed by nitroglycerin so we have Stable functional classification three of stenocardia. So if it is relieved at rest, it is you are thinking of our two and does in severe activities. In functional type one, there's cardiac pathology, but there's no manifestation of symptom even when patient performs severe activities. And in type four, you will describe that even at rest, symptoms still continue. All right, we have a patient with um, stomach ache arising 1.5 to 2 hours after me. The most important thing is that we are having it an hour to two after me and at night. I'm sure you are thinking right now of duodenum, duodenum, and abdominal release epigastric pain on the right. So I think that is where you have your duodenum as well. So that was much of our time, this duodenum also. We have a patient with ripe subcostal dull pain and appetite has been declining, notice over six months. Weight loss, whenever there's weight loss, I think of cancer except otherwise. And there's only one way for me to uh, confirm that in a patient that is having history of gastric peptic ulcer, it is by having a biopsy, a biopsy. So what method of investigation be most useful? When you suspect a cancerous condition, please do biopsy. Forget about every other option. You can read this history of infectious disease, but 
there is one reason I will advise you not to go to Siberia in this period when you are preparing for your crop is to avoid tick bone encephalitis and whenever they are telling you about a region one of the first things I try to think about is that there is a vector bone disease there is a vector bone disease so that will help me to narrow down my answer but specifically it's tick bone encephalitis you can see meningial signs and everything so we have 37 year old patient right epigastric or sudden occupant in the right epigastric area after having fatty food what method of uh, investigation will you employ so since it's actually with fatty food i'm thinking of my gallbladder so this is not musculoskeletal as we said in our previous video so if it is your gallbladder people do it almost every time you do an ultrasound ultrasonic examination check for the stones 68 year old patients are thinking of some pains enlargement of cervical axillary lymph node they are thinking of cancers lymphocytes 60 percent and that's high white blood cell 35 oh i think you have some extra air to give to patients that have low white blood cells but skin complex bodies they are thinking of a condition of lympholycosis together with this uh, data so the correct answer yes can exclude all these other ones chronic lympholycosis the third year patient is having polyneuritic syndrome at the back of my mind i just keep it as uh, polyneuritis peripheral nerves are affected how can i and with considerable loss of weight so there's there's a pathology affecting maybe nerve and its peripheral nerves it might be a cancerous condition or whatever but also in this particular kind of investigation where there's weight loss i want to do histological examination under any condition so that's a muscular biopsy with histological investigation of the material the material there is the muscle um, that be taken we have 30 year old patient suffering from pain in the sacrum and coxal femoral joints like the hip joints you can see painfulness in the lumbar spine for a year ankylosing spondylitis is actually with hlb 27 antigen it's so nice to sit in the question and one of the major features even under the classification is bilateral sacroiliitis so this question is straightforward ankylosing spondylitis bilateral sacroiliitis all right we have a uh, hypertensive patient also on the background of a renal disorder how do you know there's daily loss of protein so when you're having proteinuria is very common uh, it's one of the very common questions in in retirement or in ukraine you're having protein you are in an apathetic patient the best drug to use is an ace inhibitor and you can think an enzyme inhibitor please don't forget that also in clinical practice 26 year old male patient with post-operative hypothyroidism very simple something is low you increase it so they start giving the patient tyroxine and now patient is developing uh, uh, signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism as a sort of the drug intake so what do you do you reduce it so it's very simple to decrease tyrosine dosage aha here we have normal parameters of almost everything yes patient is having out of hospital pneumonia so this patient just need to be under supervision I don't know what work the patient is doing. I don't know what condition might possibly be causing the intensification of pulmonary picture to the right in the right in the uh, lower lobe. So this kind of patient, according to protocol, should be observed over a period of 12 months. That is, you observe the patient for one year.
after a tuberculin tells test, a patient have uh, a patient develop hyperagy or hyperagic reaction. A patient develop hyperagy. What signs determine the hyperagic test in this adolescent? From class, we is supposed to be 17 millimeters or greater than 17 millimeters, but we don't have that in this option. So, but a condition more severe is appearing here, which is a necrosis. So this is the correct answer. At first, I was thinking it should be one of these IR figures greater than 17, but no, we have necrosis here. That's the correct answer. So we have a patient who is a minor, and according to the answer and the history in this patient, the one of the things we are thinking is 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 a coal miner, it's mining coal. So we have free silica 15%. So the other component of this remaining 15% is believed to be anthracosis, anthracosis, but is combined together with um, silica powder, and that will give us anthracosis silicosis. Please don't confuse it with anthracosilicatosis. It is anthracosilicosis. Anthracosis, it anthra means anthrac means coal. Alright, we have a patient with pathological lump right in the region. Most likely this kind of question will come as an exam, but please notice it is media, it is near the media part of proper ligament. This is inguinal ligament and also inward from the spermatic cord. Based on these two information, I we just know that it is a direct form of uh, inguinal hernia. So the question is in right, okay, right side direct inguinal hernia. Okay. This particular patient has been operated on peptic ulcer of the stomach, weight loss of 10 kg, um, level of glucose on empty stomach, you could assume as fasting, is 6.7 millimole. That's I, and also after me, 11.1. But the most important thing here is the fact that they told us about HA1C. This is a retrospective marker. Uh, in monitoring the treatment of patient with diabetes mellitus over 120 day period or three months. So for patients who have HAP1C 10%, which is over three months, so definitely this is not a patient that is uh, probably pre-diabetes, a patient that has been diagnosed of diabetes mellitus. So I'm supposed to add the norm is uh, up to 6.1 HAP1C. HbA1c rather. So we have a 52-year-old woman complaining of weakness, painful itching after washing and bathing, sensation of heaviness in the head. Uh, notice hyperemia of the face, together with hypertension, arterial hypertension. Spleen is four centimeter below the rib cage. So what is the spleen doing in this particular question? That excludes many of these answers and leaves us to only one thing. Erythremia here is the same thing as polycythemia. So we have excessive production of red blood cells and also increase in blood volume, which is what is going to cause the hyperemia, the blood volume, um, the erythrocytremia causing hyperemia, the blood volume also causing increase in blood pressure. So you just want to think of polycythemia. Our spleen is trying to do a lot to take those blood out of the circulation. So we have splenomegaly. So straightforward, we have every training. All right, this is similar to a question we had before. You can see that skin is gray and moist in a patient that needs uh, resuscitation. And there is an ammonia odor in the air. If you see ammonia in the air, look at somebody around who is releasing that ammonia to the air. And that person is having problem with excess urea in the blood. That is uremic coma. Again, you can read through the question. This is a cardiology case. And once the patient, again, once they give you the ECG 
um, every other thing. What method of investigation is necessary to do to determine uh, diagnosis? Echo is never wrong. In 99% of the time, a 55 year old patient complains of distended abdomen and rumbling, increased wing evacuation. So, some fermentative processes are going on there. So, some, some of your classmates that do disturb you with some kind of um, sour smell coming out of their <laughs> lower parts in class silently or loudly, they are having some fermentative processes in them. And that is this is just the syndrome of uh, fermentative dyspepsia. Syndrome of fermentative uh, dyspepsia. If it's malabsorption, they will give us some other history. If it is fatty dyspepsia, they will tell us not just daily products, but have fat consumption and many other things. We have 54 year old patients over 20 years of age having femoral osteomyelitis. This is something very bad for somebody to have for over a period of 20 years. These kind of conditions will affect the immune system, will cause the body to produce certain kinds of abnormal proteins. And in this condition, they are amyloid proteins. And amyloid proteins could spread to the kidneys and to the heart, especially, causing a condition of amyloidosis. Uh, but you notice that it, there's uh, proteinuria 6.6, that's so much. A problem because the patient is simply losing protein. So, this is secondary renal amyloidosis. Secondary renal amyloidosis. Please don't, it's not acute coronary nephritis, it's not chronic coronary nephritis because of the femoral osteomyelitis and the uh, history. And this, this immune system is affected. Okay, we have diphtheria, different outbursts in families over three years. What's the best thing to reduce morbidity rate? Morbidity is talking about the disease rate. It's different from mortality. It's to reduce the morbidity rate to single cases. What do you do? Immunize them. Simple. We have another patient in the water body. I don't know what they are looking for. The victim shows no vital signs. But the best thing to do in this patient is to, is to release the respiratory tract from water, to create a drain position, that is by the posture of the patient, and to take on measures to restore respiration and blood circulation. That is the correct sequence. I am very familiar with this particular case in real life. <laughs> so. Uh, a little gas wedding operator, you will notice that they always use dark glasses. And why are they trying to use dark glasses? It's just to prevent photoelectric of time. Yeah. Okay, you have, you can read through this and something is coming to your mind, diphtheria. But there's something that is missing in the question that I think most of us might have kept at the back of our mind, that diphtheria is difficult to separate. But coated with is also grey with grey patch with spread to uvular and fertile palatine arcades. So it's still diphtheria, larynx, laryngeal diphtheria. In recent agenda there are going to be ulcerations and other things. Okay, we have a patient here who forty eight year old patient complains constant pain in the upper upper abdomen. We have diarrhea, weight loss. Patient is an alcohol abuser. So patient refuse to stop alcohol. Right now, alcohol is about to stop the patient. <laughs> so we have two years ago he had acute pancreatitis. But what's the major condition? You can see that the glucose level is being is elevated. Amylase level is uh, decreased in this uh, amylase level is decreased in this particular patient. I'm trying to remember the normal level of amylase, but it's supposed to be from 12 or so, but it's supposed to be greater than 4, but it is low here. Yeah. So it means that we're having pancreatic insufficiency, and what do you do? You give a drug that can also, that will probably contain those pancreatic enzymes. Here, yeah, the correct answer is uh, pancreatic fourth. Contrical will be used in condition of acute pancreatitis, so please don't confuse the two together. 
Panzano uh, Fort. We have interesting patients here who is having transmural infarction. This acute transmural infarction, this must be really painful for the patient. Patient is developing shock, respiratory rate is 30 per minute, and the patient right now is presenting with moist rays in lower parts of the lungs because the heart is failing and we mo like moist rays here means pulmonary edema. So what do you want to do? You want to give the drug you know, like the patient a drug that can reduce pain and a drug that can actually try to revise pulmonary edema. And one of those drugs which is missing in the option here is uh, morphine. But we have Promedol in the option. Promedol is half effective as morphine. It's an opioid analgesic. It will um, try to relieve patient of pain and also try to reverse pulmonary edema. That is why it is given in the very first place, Promedol. We have 62 year old patient here who is going into shock. Actually, it's one six, but most people are going to shock. We have which is turnout pain which cannot be relieved by nitroglycerin. How would you explain the arterial pressure drop? Definitely, the patient, since the patient is having continuous attack of which is turnout pain, are thinking of myocardial infarction because it cannot be released by nitroglycerin. So the best thing is that the heart is failing. When the heart is failing, it cannot pump out blood effectively to the circulation. We are talking about a reduction in the cardiac output. Okay. As you read through the question, you will just discover that the patient is having pain and other symptoms, other manifestation, but you cannot really find anything on uh, see on um, investigation, ECG show no pathology and so on and so forth. This patient is having somatization de depression, and this is actually more common than we think in the population. Heart pain in the morning, and you can see that in the evening, patient is getting better, so it's affected also by this season. All right, it's in your patients. Complaints of pain in knee and ankle joints. Okay, this is uh, appearing like migratory arthritis, and that is also somehow typical for rheumatic fever. So let's continue. We have fever, rheumatic fever, <laughs> uh, respiratory disease uh, one and a half weeks ago, solely mean and joint pulse. You can see patient is going to develop shock and border without changes soft systolic apical murmur you know that in the apex of the heart you are looking forward to your mitral valve the mitral valve is the most commonly affected valve in rheumatic fever and patients have had respiratory disease one point one and a half weeks ago you are thinking of something that is as a sort of streptococcal infection specifically streptococcus pyogenes and one of the best tests to do there is to check the anti-streptolysine O level. This is the very last question in our first folder of internal medicine, the one with the first hundred questions. So, 30 year old male patient who had been ill for one and a half months, rash covering, uh, rash with paired purpose covered with bloody crust on the abdomen. If all these cases, all this uh, history, what really got my attention here is the fact that the purples are paired. They are paired. There are traces of line of scratches. I could remember the dermatology teacher saying scabies that they like to go together, two two. So the best thing to do there is to uh, examine the rash elements scrape. You can see scratches and that's really put our attention to this so to check for sarcoptis scabies so we've come to the end of this uh, I think we'll go to the next folder and some of the persons who have been enjoying the video as well is requesting for ups and gain hopefully we we'll get there so let's take it a step 
at a time. Success as you continue to prepare.